Hey fellow babies, welcome back to this week's Pactor Factor. Uh, I'm Michael Pactor on Twitter at Michael Pactor. Uh, hope you are watching this on Patreon real time as opposed to on YouTube a week late. If you're a Patreon patron, we appreciate it. Um, it's not much if you can afford it. It keeps these shows being produced. If you can't afford Patreon, please look at the link right below the YouTube uh, description, or right on the YouTube description. You can connect your Twitch and Prime accounts. And if you do that, Amazon pays Shane $2.50. It doesn't take any effort from you. Click the link and it happens. This week's first question from Sifted from... Is that all one name or two guys asked it's it? two guys. Okay. From RyGuy380 and M. Amaral. Uh, I'm not sure if it's recency bias, but it seems like in the past few years, more and more games are being released too early. Is this an actual trend or has it always been an issue to this degree? Will a finished product do better overall despite the ability to improve unfinished ones with constant updates? With games like Anthem that do not meet expectations, the studios and publishers know they're going to be poorly received and decide that investing more time is not worth the increase in sales. Um, on Anthem in particular, that was delayed. Um, Anthem was initially supposed to come out in the fall and they pushed it to, to March to let it have more time. So I don't think the answer is that they know it's gonna be poorly received. Um, and yeah, I, I think that they literally, mostly 95% of games try to do the best they can and not launch it until it's ready. The, the only time I think you see games that are launched when they're not ready is when they're tied to a movie. So that might have been the Star Wars games, and I don't know this, I'm just saying that's the kind of thing where the game has to come out. So possibly, you know, if they had had the opportunity to work on them six more months and get them right, they would have. And annual sports franchises, um, and annual games, Call of Duty. You can't slip. Those games have to come out because they come out in their window and that's what it is. So NBA from EA, I don't know how many years it takes to get it right. They haven't gotten it right. But, you know, they've canceled it a couple of years. Um, but it, when they launch it, it better launch with basketball season. So they, they're screwed if they can't get it right. And they've canceled it a couple of years trying to get it right. I don't know why they don't just give up and, and just say we can't do it. Um, but every other game, I don't think they cut their losses. I think that they work on them. They hope that they're going to get them right. And right means an 80 Metacritic score. I don't think anybody but Rockstar, you know, possibly Sony, aspires to get a 90 on every game. Rockstar absolutely does. I mean, everybody would like to, and so I don't mean that they don't try. But Rockstar and Sony, uh, they release games when they're ready, you know, and Rockstar in particular. Red Dead was eight years in development. So they were like, nope, we're not putting this damn thing out until we are sure it's right. Um, and I'm cool with that. Look, they're two of the best games of all time. They're top two of the top 10 highest rated games ever. Um, so that works. Uh, EA doesn't have the luxury of doing that with something like Anthem. I don't know what's wrong with Anthem. I, you know, I think that we're too much like Destiny and the stuff they tried to differ differentiate wasn't enough to make gamers feel like it was a big step up from Destiny. And neither Destiny got a great review score. They were both in the 70s. So I think that gamers saw Anthem and said it's a Me Too Destiny. The new features don't add that much to, to the fun of the game and been there, done that, so we're gonna give it a lower score than Destiny. I, I really think game reviewers were pretty harsh in their criticism of Anthem, but I, you know, I, don't, I, I haven't read anything in there that says this game just sucks and nothing works and all the players you know, go in the wrong direction and, you know, and the, the battle system doesn't work and the balancing system. I mean, it's not that bad. Rightfully so, game reviewers expect any game in any genre to be better than all the games before it in order to get better than a 75 or 80 score. And any game that they don't perceive to be better they're going to get a lower score. That's legit, and they do that. Anthem didn't. I don't think it was. It launched too early. I think they were too ambitious with what they tried to do, and they just didn't execute. And that's unfortunate. Um, so the answer is, you know, what makes a game too early in your view? It comes out and it doesn't satisfy you. It doesn't have everything you wanted in the game. And the problem is, you want more. So if you play that game and it's exactly the same as another game you played, you'd be like, 
I'm not satisfied. I already played Destiny. I don't want to play Destiny again. I want to play a new game. And so they have to improve stuff. And if you perceive they failed, you're like, it went out before it was ready because it didn't improve on that. Or this new feature didn't work because I didn't like it. Therefore, they should have spent six more months working on this feature. And the real problem is every consumer has different things they like. And the developer has to anticipate what you will like and then execute. And that's hard. So I actually think the answer to your question is um, people expect more from games than many developers are capable of delivering. And it is the rare game that actually improves every time it comes out. That one's called God of War, right? And that one's called Red Dead Redemption. Our next question from Sifted from Erebus Jones. Is Brexit going to make gaming a cheaper hobby in the UK? God, you don't want to get me started on Brexit. All right, Brexit is the fucking stupidest thing I've ever heard of. So you guys are fucking morons for voting for it. Um, so the answer is no. Life in the UK is gonna, is gonna be much more expensive. Everything you do is gonna be worse because of Brexit. Um, I don't even know how to explain that any better than that. Brexit is a, the goal of Brexit is to make uh, immigration tougher and not have people come in and take jobs from Brits. I get that. That's, that's legit. If, if, if you have unemployment because other people are coming in and taking your jobs, I get why you would want that to stop. You're hurt, they're helped. Here's the problem. Brexit, not Brexit, the EU and the European community made, they facilitated trade. So you could buy stuff from other countries that were part of the EU and the EC, and they could buy stuff from Britain. Well, what happened, no tariffs, you, you ended up with free transfer of goods. What happens when you have free transfer of goods? There are some things that are cheaper to make in other places than in the UK. Let me give you one good easy example, olive oil. You don't exactly have the climate to grow a ton of olive trees and make olive oil, but Spain does, Greece does, and so you can buy olive oil from Spain and Greece and it's pretty cheap because they have a lot of land, they have a lot of people willing to make olive oil, and they both have much weaker economies than the UK. So they pay lower wages in Spain and Greece than they pay in the UK. They have more olives, they can produce olive oil, and you get to buy it cheaply. And what happens when you get out of the EU? Guess what? Cost of olive oil is going up because there's going to be tariffs and you guys are going to pay them. So the cost of food is going to go up. That Italian restaurant you like to go to because they have bread with olive dip, olive oil dip, that cost is going up. Answer is everything is going to be more expensive than UK. You guys did the single dumbest economic thing I've ever seen. And by the way, I live in the US. We do dumb shit all the time. We have the same reasons. Our president is anti-trade. It's quite interesting. I'm a, I'm a massive Democrat. The Republican Party is the party of free trade because the Republican Party gets that if we can buy stuff from other places that's cheaper, it's okay if we lose those jobs. US sugar prices are something like 10 times world sugar prices. Why? Because sugar elsewhere in the world, guess where it grows? Tropical climates, Cuba. We don't trade with Cuba for political reasons. Um, all the islands in the Caribbean, Africa, you know, a bunch of Asian places have sugar. And you could import sugar for literally one-tenth the cost that it costs to make here. So what do we flavor our Coca-Cola with? Corn syrup. You know what they flavor Coca-Cola with in Mexico? Sugar. So Coca-Cola is sweeter in Mexico and cheaper because the sugar doesn't cost much. Dumb. So we shoot ourselves in the foot. We do stuff like that all the time. Um, so yeah, Br Brexit, dumbest thing ever for the consumer. Consumers are gonna get screwed. You're paying more for everything that you currently import. And so the only stuff that's gonna be reasonably priced in the UK is stuff you produce. So good news, scotch whiskey. You produce it, so you can drink scotch. Um, the, 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 and actually, the bad news is, because of tariffs now, scotch is gonna have tariffs when it's, when it's shipped elsewhere. 
So your scotch distilleries are gonna actually have trouble with demand for scotch sales elsewhere. You're gonna limit demand from other places. So bad for the distilleries, good for me. No, Brexit, bad, bad idea. Um, everything, all your costs of everything are going up. It's just, it was really, really dumb. All right, next question, what a great name. Um, from Patreon, from Mac Attack QC. Given the media industry's consolidation, do you expect the same for video game companies? If so, which publishers do you think will end up on top? Which are most likely to merge or be acquired? Um, it already happened. Um, I started, God, I started doing this in 2001. Um, I covered 11 publishers, 11 public company video game publishers. And I didn't cover uh, IDOS, which was a public company at the time. I didn't cover BAM, which is a public company at the time, and I didn't cover any Japanese publishers. Um, since I started, so in the last 18 years, um, Square and, and Enix merged, Namco and Bandai merged, Tecmo and Koei. Tecmo, I was trying to think. Tecmo and Koei merged. Konami didn't merge, right? Yeah. Capcom didn't merge. Um, so we've seen mergers in the Japanese industry. IDOS got bought by Square Enix, so they disappeared. Um, BAM, Acclaim, got enough trouble remembering all these. BAM, Acclaim, Atari, THQ, Midway. Am I missing anybody? Went essentially went bank essentially went bankrupt. Atari. Oh, Interplay, Interplay. I think there's another one. I covered all those guys. Infogroms. Yeah, oh God. Infogram and, and GT Interactive. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So at least eight companies got acquired or went away. Maybe nine or ten. So we've had the massive consolidation, and you know we can debate whether it makes sense for Take Two to be a private co or standalone company, or they should merge or buy Bethesda, or whether Ubisoft, Ubisoft should be a private company, or they should get bought by somebody. And not, not because they're not profitable or competent, but they're just small relative to the other guys. I mean, Take Two is about 13 billion, so it's not exactly a dinky company. THQ is about, I think, three billion. You know, so it's, and Atari and Acclaim and all those sort of like under a billion. So the little guys are already gone. Now we're left with the smallest guy is 13 billion dollars. So Ubisoft's a little bigger, uh, maybe the same. So the small guys are 13 billion. The big guys, you know, EA is 30 billion. Um, Activision is probably 35, so they're big. Um, so it's not like you need consolidation. Now we've seen it in media, Time Warner sold for 84 billion, so that was a big company that got swallowed up. Uh, Disney and Fox, I think Fox is 54 billion, give or take. So, you know, bigger than Activision and EA. So yes, of course you could have consolidation. But I think they're all big enough that they don't need to consolidate in order to be profitable, uh, as Midway and THQ probably did. Um, Acclaim, definitely smaller. Atari, Infogrom, Bam, Tiny, those are all under, well under a billion dollars. No, I don't think so. Um, as I said, the guys who I think could merge, I think Take-Two and Ubisoft actually fit perfectly with one another. I think either of those guys in Bethesda fit really well. Um, because Bethesda is like take two high quality games except for Fallout 76. High quality games, um, they take their time making them, they own all their IP, so they're really a good company, very much like Rockstar that way. Um, they're, the developers are super talented and super conscientious. Um, UB and take two I think makes sense because take two's got a good base of recurring revenue from NBA and from all of its uh, digital recurring revenue. And UB's trying to get there, but UB has a lot of IP, but it comes out every three years or so. Um, but they're pretty good about getting stuff out. They're just figuring out how to monetize stuff like The Division, where I think that you know Rockstar could help them the way they've done GTA Online. So I could see those guys mutually benefiting from a consolidation. And again, that makes them the same size as EA, um, and that makes them much more appealing, I think. But I don't think uh, any of them need to be acquired, and I think Activision and EA will continue to be bigger than the other two guys until the other two guys increase their, their revenues. Uh, the, the difference between EA and Take-Two is EA has a 20 million unit seller every day, every year, excuse me, um, with FIFA. 
Activision has 20 million unit seller every year. Take two might have a hundred million GTA every five years, you know, fine, but they don't do it every year. I mean, they just don't. NBA is their most impressive annual game, 10 million a year. Everything else, who knows when the next Red Dead or GTA is coming out. And I don't think LA Noir, Max Payne are gonna be, you know, 20 million unit sellers. So they just don't have the, the recurring massive hit and it's not that Take-Two sucks, it's that Activision and EA just are amazing. I mean, they just have done an amazing job with those franchises. You be saying, they're, they're really good, they just haven't yet come up with that, that formula. Our next question from YouTube, from BigWillDog82. Do you think consumers will ultimately regret going all digital due to server slash authentication problems, revocation of access, cross-platform licensing issues, etc.? at least with a disc or cartridge, you've got physical ownership and guaranteed access to the game code. Um, I, I think that's a reasonable question and I think I'm gonna turn that question upside down. That's why I think that the, the console manufacturers will continue to include disc drives because there's a certain number of consumers who don't trust the, the keepers of security to allow you access to everything all the time. Um, if you remember the launch of the Xbox One, uh, Don Matrick was still at, at EA. They had all that server authentication portability shit going on and everybody freaked out. Now I'm, that was back in 13, so I'm, I'm challenging you to remember six years ago. But people were freaked about it. It was like, Digital you know, rights management was so onerous that if you took your disc to your friend's you know, Xbox One, it wasn't clear if you'd be able to play. If you wanted to take your disc to his house and play on his um, console, it wasn't clear if you would even be able to do that. And Microsoft announced this Monday morning at E3, whatever the date that was, June 10th or something. And Monday evening, Sony mocked them on stage they said, let us show you digital rights management on the PS4, and Shu Yoshida handed a disc to Adam Boys. That was a brilliant marketing trick. They made fun of Microsoft. The Xbox One still hasn't recovered from a six-year-old mistake. People hated them. Now, other stuff happened. They were priced too high. They, they forced you to buy Kinect. But, of course, Microsoft got rid of those digital rights management rules before they launched the console. But, yes. Consumers now don't trust anybody on digital downloads. Um, so the answer is on the consoles, yes, you're right. But we've been all digital on PC forever. Um, of course, I guess you can still buy a PC, you know, DVD, but most people just download because it's easy. Nobody has any problem with digital rights management on PC. I remember, and I mean, I, I, I'll bet anything the rules are the same now, but I remember you used to download a game and they'd give you five devices you could download it to. I don't know if that's still the rule because I haven't tried to do it since. Doom 3, I bought it on PC, I want to say 2003, it could have been 2004. And I remember when, I, I played that game all the time, and I remember trying to put it on a PC I bought in 08 or 09, and it was like, you've exceeded the five device limit. And I was like, shit, I bought the game. It's still me, you know? I mean, my old PCs, I, I donated them to charity. Nobody was playing the game, you know? I was like, come on, I mean, it's just so stupid. And yet, you know, that, some people used to bitch and moan about that. And guys would bitch that it was like, oh, I have two PCs at home and one at work. And, I, you know, and it was terrible. The, the console makers are aware of this issue. I think Microsoft screwed up so badly they will never screw this up again. So my bias is you will get a disk drive. And I get that it's more expensive for them and there's fewer people who care, but those of you who care are gonna get one. Um, and if they don't give you that, I think they will not change all the, the rules right now on authentication stuff. I think they'll keep it so you can you can play your game anywhere as long as they can verify it's you. I have to say, I, I don't even know what I did to my PC, but. I went to Australia, I shut my PC off for three weeks just because I figured why leave it on, I mean, what the hell. And I came back and I turned it on and it updated something and it was like, log into iCloud again. So I'm like, okay. So I log into iCloud and it goes, we don't recognize you. Same fucking PC. And it's like, you know, we're gonna send an authentication code to your damn phone. 
I hate that. And I don't even know what happened. Nothing changed. Same PC, connected to the same network. All I did was power it off and for three weeks, and then it, I have to go through all this crap. And it's like, you know, so I hate that. Even though I, I passed, you know, I hate that. So authentication, you're right, it's a pain in the ass, but if it's as simple as, we'll send a code to your phone to validate that it's really you, and that's what everybody should do. If you take your game to another person's house, or you access your digital file at another person's house, send a six digit code to your phone so that you can say it's you, that's not hard. People will do that. I get it's reasonable for these guys not to want that same game to be you know, sold 50 times, but they can't make it too hard. Um, that's it for this week's Pactor Factor. Thank you for joining us as a Patreon patron. If you are not one of those and you're a Prime member, please link your Prime account to your Twitch account. The link is right below this video. Um, if you are too lame to do that or you're not a Prime member, please follow us on Twitter at Michael Pactor, at Dinfire, at Sifted Games. See you next week.